hear again what are perhaps the most familiar words in all of Scripture, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, remind us above all else that you are with us no matter where we are or where we're going or how we feel lost or afraid. Remind us, show us that you are always with us. May the words of my mouth this day, the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock, our redeemer, our shepherd. Amen. It is tempting to just sit down after reading the 23rd Psalm for fear of over-talking a text that is so rich in history and meaning that simply the sound of its words and the rhythm of its cadence sing us into the presence of God. Nevertheless, I'll stay up here for a few minutes at least. Psalm 23, as you know, is, is so often used in funerals or memorial services because in the moment when we reach for our own our, our best and truest words to sum up life, we go here to the 23rd Psalm. The assuring testimony of Psalm 23 is that belonging to God in life and in death today and tomorrow is a good thing indeed, a great thing. It may be the only thing for some to hang on to in the midst of, of grief and loss. There are not more familiar words in all of Scripture, I don't think. These verses have been the source of encouragement for, for Jews and Christians throughout the centuries. These words are a security blanket of sorts to the realities of life. And we see in this, this psalm themes of provision, abundance, restoration. As you know, one of the truest li- first lines of any book ever written is from the road less traveled. Life is difficult. Those are the first words. And when you find yourself in difficult times with darkness surrounding you, those close to you may try to lift your spirits by saying things like, cheer up, or this too shall pass, or why not look on the bright side? Because they care for you, their, their instinct is to, is to try and get rid of the darkness or to try to, to still those, those rough waters raging all around you. And we know that those attempts rarely, if ever, work very well. Psalm 23 takes a different approach. Psalm 23 says that the shepherd Lord walks with us in the midst of the darkness, is with us in the rough waters. The valley of that darkness is the place of our deepest troubles and fears, the place where we have no control, the place where we think no one will ever accompany us, that we are totally alone. And the darkness may not change much, it seems, but we are changed, actually, when we receive the gift of God's presence 
walking with us in the darkness, beside us in the darkness. Harold Kushner, the, the prominent American rabbi, writes that when illness, bereavement, and the losses cast a shadow over our lives, God is there. And we remember that shadows are only cast because the sun is shining somewhere to take us by the hand and lead us through the valley of the shadow and into the sunlight. Now, there are stories upon stories of each of you here today facing challenges or challenges you have faced, times of extreme uncertainty and doubt and illness, almost to the degree that, that you have wondered perhaps how many more battering waves you could take or how much more darkness could really could you handle? And life under God's care is not free of dark valleys, but our experiences perhaps show us, as we look back on them, that we can navigate those valleys and, and rough waters with confidence because the darkness loses its power in the midst of the Lord's presence. The psalmist here never denies the presence of evil or darkness. He just doesn't fear it. Because the one shepherding us will look out for us. Whatever trials we face, the one shepherding us will fight for us. Whatever weighs us down, keep us from ha keeping us from having the strength to move on, the one shepherding us will keep us going somehow. Because that's what shepherds do. That's who they are. That's their job. The most important thing to a shepherd is the one he or she is shepherding, taking care of, paying attention to, keeping close. Even modern day shepherds, like the ones I saw in Israel last spring, have, have learned this art of multitasking in a pretty remarkable way. As our tour bus drove down the highway from Jerusalem toward the Dead Sea, I would look out into the countryside, into the, the fields on either side of the highway, and I would notice young shepherds walking with their sheep and their goats but also looking at their cell phones while they were doing that. It's not what I expected to see. But shepherds are always aware of their circumstances, the circumstances of their, of their flock and what their flock is encountering. Shepherds don't leave. They're always near. And in the dark times especially, don't we just want to be assured that God is near, that God is indeed leading us beside still waters? Many of us perhaps rarely experience stillness in our lives these days. Plugged into media devices, surrounded by a total disharmony of noises and bombarded by endless messages throughout our days and, and ruled by our schedules and the demands placed on us we often neglect the stillness that, a, that even a weekly God-designed Sabbath offers. We forget that we were created for rest as well as work. But we act as if we're just created for work. And more and more it seems that our busy lives are pulling us away from, from family meals or meals with friends, from leisurely conversations we prefer to text. It's quicker. From long walks with good friends or loved ones. We find, at least I do, that, that human interactions of all sorts are being increasingly facilitated by electronics. In our world today, finding authentic stillness with one another and in the presence of God is increasingly difficult. Now, in Hebrew, the term for still waters derives from manuka, which means quiet place of rest. So when the psalmist praises God for leading him beside still waters, he is not only thanking God for providing what he needs, he is thanking God for keeping the waters still, keeping them somewhat manageable and less threatening. God leading us to a place of stillness and rest is God doing for us what we are either unwilling to do for ourselves when we need to stop and be restored and we are unwilling to do so, or when we are blind to our need 
to stop and be restored spiritually and mentally, emotionally, physically, and to find that rest and refreshment. And so while it is very appropriate that this 23rd Psalm is read in the midst of death and dying, it seems more appropriate that this psalm be read as a psalm about living. It puts our daily lives in a God-centered perspective. God not only is the Lord of the universe, but also very much down to earth. In fact, The divine name Yahweh, what we translate as Lord, provides bookends to this psalm. At the very center of the psalm, exactly 26 words in Hebrew from the first and the last word of the text appears the phrase, for you are with me. It's the center of the psalm, the statement, which is also the center of our lives. And it's fitting, isn't it, how This intentional and poetic structure is a reflection of how our lives are encased by God's life with the promise that God is always with us at the center. The shepherd's love is with us, both following us and going before us, offering us a nudge here and there, leading us toward toward that that place of, of confidence that we are at home with God, that we are at home with Jesus Christ. It is a simple statement of faith that holds us all together because God is about the business of restoring our souls and God is relentless in chasing after us even if we are headed in a different direction so that we can say at some point and live with the utmost confidence, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house, in the rest and care of my God forever. 